This lesson is a little bit more with recursive formula notation. We recommend that you have viewed lesson 1-8 before you view this lesson. All right, remembering that any kind of formula, recursive formula, is going to have two parts. You have to establish your first term, in this case t sub 1 has a value of 1, and then you have to tell how to generate the nth term. The nth term will be generated by taking the preceding term, in this case t sub n minus 1, and adding n to the value of the preceding term. For integers, n greater than or equal to 2. Again, because n stands for the number of term you're on, and we already have the first term, the value has been given to us. So we're going to start here where n is greater than or equal to 2. All right. So t sub 1 is 1. Now let's generate t sub 2. t sub 2 would be t sub 1 plus 2. Well now t sub 1 is 1. And then if I take my n, which is 2, and add that, I'll get a value of 3. Let me go ahead and circle that, those values. All right, now t sub 3 would be the preceding value, which was 3 plus n, which is 3, and that's going to give me 6. t sub 4 would be the value of t sub 3, which is 6, plus n, which is 4, which gives Take me a look at it. This is the triangle number sequence, okay? Triangular numbers. We spoke about those just a couple lessons ago. Those were where we start with 1, and then we have 3, and then we have 6. Next one is going to be 4 more than 6, which is 10. But in lesson 17a, we learned an explicit formula to describe triangular numbers. And that formula was this. t sub n was equal to n times the quantity n plus 1, close quantity, all divided by 2. Hmm. So it turns out that there, in this particular case, we have an explicit function as well as recursive formula that will describe triangular numbers. Aha! The famous Fibonacci sequence! Yay! This is one of the most famous sequences in all of mathematics. And woo, it was invented by an Italian named Leonardo of Pisa. He, he wrote uh, math stuff. And he used a surname, or not a surname, a uh, pseudonym. And the pseudonym he used was Fibonacci. And this is so famous that we still teach it to kids. Now, when you first look at it, the first, inc the first inclination people have is to say, there's no relationship between these numbers. And then they say, because, you know, here, 1, 1, and then 2, okay, and all right, so uh, how are these guys related? Well... All right, then here you're not adding anything, but here you're adding 1, and here you're adding 1, and then here you're adding 2, and then here you're adding 3, and then uh, here you're adding 3. It's like, ugh, what, what is going on here? Well, it turns out that you kind of have to think outside the box a little bit to see the relationship here. This is a recursive, this is like an ultra-recursive sequence because each term depends not on the one term that came just directly prior to it, but on the two terms that came prior to it. For example, you have a 1 here and you have a 1 here. These are your starting points. Okay, the whole sequence depends upon these two numbers. Every term after the second term depends on the preceding two. 
1 plus 1 is 2. And then 1 plus 2 is 3. And 2 plus 3 is 5. And 3 plus 5 will generate 8. And so on and so on and so on. So now that you've seen Fibonacci, you'll know to look for it. And uh, all kinds of variations of it come up. Uh, you know, on the SATs and things like that, and in, in general life. All right, so how are we going to describe this recursively? All right, well, to do this, we have to tell our readers the first two terms. So t sub 1 is equal to 1, and t sub 2 is also equal to Now, t sub n, the nth term, can always be found by taking t sub n minus 2 plus t sub n minus 1. For values of n greater than or equal to 3. 